my name's John, welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. Tonight's nightcap is basically all machining work. I finished those bronze castings off for the old lifeboat in part one. I bought a new camera, uh, uh, like a semi-pro camera, more for doing outdoor work than workshop work. But saying that, I am using it at the minute. Uh, I make an adapter to take a, a big wide angle lens on the front of that. Uh, some real fine screw cutting, I sure quite a lot of that. Anyways, first thing I'm going to do is draw for the set of 12 mm taps from last week. I'll be out by myself, so I'll have to do it. I'll have a good forage around. I think I feel like your 40 names went in this week, so it's like Deb says it is for the look. There's a one. Right, the name I've got is Peter Field. Right Peter, all you've got to do is send me an email with an address on, I'll get those in the post as soon as I possibly can. I'm going to do another draw this week, this time it's going to be for two pair of nice calipers which I bought in a car boot sale this morning, specifically to give away. Uh, one's one in right and the other one is Coopers in soon. Anyway, they're in good condition, all I want is a little bit of polish up, which will fine wet and dry and they'll basically last forever. I'll get a close up shot of these later on. As usual if you want a chance at winning them all you need to do send me an email that's my email address up there with your full name on like John Mills not just John. Your name goes into there if you win I'll post them off like I say anywhere in the world completely free of charge. That's some of your mail came in this week I'm going to have a quick look at that. The first thing that came in from a gentleman called Luke It's a machine drill, it looks about 20 mil. Uh, what it has got, it's got tips in it and it's got holes in for water. It's a real quality drill. Uh, I'll have to machine the, the shank down again in my drill chuck, but I will get a close up shot of that later on. Right, the second item is from a lad called Terry Miles. It's basically a set of metric spanners. Uh, Terry wrote us a letter saying that he hates to see us using adjustable spanners in the workshop. I must admit, I do. I mean, I've got thousands of pounds of the spanners at work. I, I use spanners all day in my job, and I come in here and I use adjustables. Anyway, thanks very much. I'll hang them up on the wall above my bench. You'll see us using them all the time. That's the two sets of dividers for this week's giveaway. That's very, very fine surface rust on there, a little bit of oil, and some fine wet and dry, and they'll come up really nice. Nice tight springs on them. They'll basically last somebody forever. I bought these at the car boot sale this morning, a uh, set of Imperial Allen keys, full set and they're in good condition. I think as you'll that one and that one being used. I use Imperial Allen keys actually on my lathe, all the Allen keys on the lathe are Imperial so now I've got a, a set. I had bits and pieces but there's a nice, a nice full set there in the wallet to keep them nice and safe. I only paid a pound for them. That's a twist drill, loop centres. I haven't measured it to see what size it is, but you can see on the end how it's got two carbide tips and it's got two holes there for water. The water goes up the end through the drill and that cools it and lubricates it. That would be a real quality drill and it'll get put to, to good use. Like I say, I have to machine the shank down. Uh, these shanks are normally soft, good material, but they're quite soft to machine and they don't get hardened until they get up towards the front part of the drill. Right, and that's my set of metric spanners that I will hang on the wall and I'll definitely use. But actually, they look quite decent, they're nice and thin. Nice thin rings on them. I'll give them a try and see what happens. Certainly better than what I've been using. Well, I've got the camera here. Um, I made this little hole. Now, these are the Banggood carbide milling cutters that I've tried. Um, all I've done, I've used the hole as it come with them and glued them onto a piece of aluminium. It makes a nice storage rack for them. I'm going to use these all the time, which the, the review wasn't a one-off, I will be constantly using them and we'll see how they, they stand up to the sort of abuse I give things. Anyway, it's, it's a nice, simple idea just to keep them all together. Right, I've converted it into Morse taper, quite a decent sized drill in there now. I'm going to run it nice and slow and I'm also going to put the feet on with the table. What happens when you're cutting bronze and brass, the drill tends to bite and drag in, so you can't use the ordinary ordinary quill feed 
is a special way to sharpen drills so they're not quite as sharp. I think if I'm careful with this, it should be alright. If I'm going to do more than just the two of these, I would have made a pattern and put a core in and it would have saved wasting all that material while well, drilling out the centre now. I'll try a little bit of cutting oil in there. <coughs> for this one I've got the belt set up slack as well so if it does bait the belt will just slip it's doing all right quite nice doing something like this because you're doing a job that has a good chance to be around for quite a long time not like the stuff I work on in my normal job through the week I think we're going to put a power feed on this mill for quite some time a nice fit in there. Next thing to do is to machine machine the slot down through there for the brooch to go in then we can brooch them and then they're eventually finished. There's a small mark in the casting down there it's not going to affect anything. This is the guide piece for the brooch. We need to machine the 516 slot down there so I've got it resting on two parallels just make sure it is firmly down right it is dripping on both parallels so we need to find the centre and then cut the 516 slot down there ok to find the centre I simply use an edge finder Move it along until it stops moving and then it kicks off, which is there, the zero the axis. And we do it again. There. Once more for good luck, so I get my hand in to get the feel of it. That's it there, okay? Plus the other side. Same again. When it stops moving, it kicks off. Getting a reading 36.9, I'll do it again. That's it there, 36.9. So we need a half that. Then we need the 18.4. We're winding just the 18.4, winding back zero, sorry. That split the difference and it's put the job right bang in the centre of the, the quill. So now we can lock the table over that. Right, I've got a 516 spinner cutter in there. I 
to touch it off. I'm going to put coolant on this just to give it half a chance of surviving. There it is. You can take a lot, just a little gentle stream. Once we get through this boss on the end, I need the slot to be 9.5mm deep. Right, that's just touching the main body of it so I can zero the z-axis and we'll work off the we'll work off that. Take one mil at a time. Cut, should manage that, no problem at all. Well now I need to cut the keyway, I need to mark it out on there. I thought there's several ways of doing it, and the obvious way is just to line them up and just scrape through the original keyway. We should be able to pick that up no problem at all. Which we can so that's simple enough. Right to cut the keyway, the key goes into there and then the key we are cut out of the brooch, goes into there and that's pushed down through and that does the cutting. The, the brooch is actually tapered it's small at that end, bigger at that end. And as it cuts, all you do is you start putting shims in behind the brooch to pack it out until you've got it cut to its full depth. The only thing you want to watch for is these have one ambition in life, and that's the snap. They're expensive and they're really, really brittle. Uh, if you look after them, they'll last forever. <laughs> it's run to last for seconds. Right, so we'll go across the press and have a, a good brooch in this. Uh, small arbor press which I modified so I can make it longer to get bigger things in it wasn't the great or used the way it was I've got it all set up brooch is lining up with a mark there's a couple of little shims behind it just to get a, a first cut in quite simple the way it works nice straight clean push It's taken roughly half a mil in depth to a cut, which that's how thick the, the shims are you put in behind the brooch. Right, so that's the first cut done. Right, I'll bring it into the camera. You can see it's actually started to brush the kiwi. I'll start to cut the kiwi. I'll set it up again.
Right, that's what I'm doing eventually. I'm going to try and get down with my camera and see them when they're actually installed on your lifeboat. That should be interesting. Anyway, like I've said, there's a lot of time went into them, but it's something that's going to hopefully be here for a long time to come.